We have a lot to get into today's webinar, and I know we only have 30 minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us today. Um, here is our agenda for this webinar this afternoon. And like I said, there's a decent amount to go over, so if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit those via the chat. I will hold off on answering any until the end of the webinar just to make sure that I can get through all of the content. So first up, what is AI? AI is a field of study to understand how machines can emulate human intelligence. This emerging technology really helps food and beverage companies with supply chain management through logistics, predictive analytics, and transparency. So really it's about learning how these machines work and diving into them and really into the intricate systems and then also using that data to kind of give insight into some human errors that we might have not seen and also some predictive analysis, which can say, determine something might happen before we even knew it was even an error necessarily. Artificial intelligence in the food and beverage industry. And you'll see the statistic here, and I thought this one was very interesting, that according to Business Wire, increase in AI usage is such that global AI market in food and beverage is estimated to grow at a compound annual growth rate of 42.18% through 2021. I thought that was a pretty huge growth. And we've also seen an increasing number of food and beverage companies that are using artificial intelligence to stay productive and profitable. This in itself is impacting many aspects of the industry, such as financials, production, distribution, marketing, consumption, packaging, and storage. There are several different ways that AI is being used in the food and beverage industry, and right now I just kind of wanted to highlight some common areas of use for AI in the industry, which would include speeding up manual tasks. So this one's really big, although you might not think about it, but those day-to-day -day tasks really do slow you down and a lot of the new systems out there or bundles allow you to program and automate a lot of these manual tasks so that you no longer have to do them on your own or daily so that you can somewhat start to think more of a strategic leadership as well instead of doing these manual tasks. Improving worker overtime ratio is, is another one of these. Streamlining processes and compliance issues. So this one's also very big. There are a lot of compliance regulations that food and beverage companies must abide by, and you can set a lot of these up in rules within AI automation or within a lot of the new platforms um, for financials, for back-end, front-end. Detecting and eliminating inefficiencies. So as I mentioned earlier, there are some human errors that AI can really benefit and allow us to prevent. Um, these machines are able to go in, analyze the data in a way that we're not really looking at it, and determine a lot of these errors that are being caused and eliminate them. Reducing equipment repair costs. We've definitely seen a lot of this, so you can automate a lot of these um, processes, specifically with equipment, to alert you when something needs repaired, even before it's broken, just ma ma or, um, annual maintenance that's possibly done, you can have alerts set up for that, which in the end would really reduce a lot of the repair costs, causing your equipment to last longer and overall eliminating costs. Impl improving employee efficiency and human resource management. This is another area where we've seen AI do a lot of improvement and improve a lot of efficiencies within companies. Again, kind of talking about those automations that are set up that you can speed up manual tasks. This also allows improved employee efficiency as well as within the human um, resources management area as well. Achieving sufficient reductions in line downtime. This is a really huge one. Nobody wants their line to go down and it can cost thousands, even millions of dollars when something like this happens. So this can be a really big buy-in for some of your um, managers or team members for you know, investing in such adoption of AI technologies. Reducing consumer friction at the point of sale is also another common area of use. 
And then lastly, revolutionizing the whole in-store shopping experience. So it's really important for consumers to feel like you're just talking to them and you know, they're not part of a larger number. They want to feel the whole customer experience still and improved on it. Why is adapting important? So consumer packaged goods companies have experienced dismal growth in recent years. In our research from 2013 to 2016, the industry grew less than 1.8% each year on average. And although there are a lot of complications and some what of challenges of adopting AI, one fact is very clear. Food and beverage companies must invest in new innovations to cut costs, grow revenue, and stay current with consumer trends. Those who do will most likely live to thrive another day, but those who don't will find themselves possibly replaced by tech forward company giants like Amazon. So right now I'm just gonna go through four cases, um, four cases where AI can positively influence the front and back end processes of food and beverage companies. Food and beverage distributors are already implementing a lot of these, uh, such as, as I mentioned, financials and sales, planning, chemical contaminant monitoring, and back office paperwork automation. So the first case that I'm gonna highlight is self-management. Retailers use artificial intelligence to automate inventory management. One use case is to have staff take photos of store shelves to initiate a machine learning process that automatically detects missing or, or misplaced items, then it would notify stakeholders to restock or make corrections. So this would definitely improve, empl improve employee efficiency as inventory would be automatically stacked and reordered as opposed to waiting for it to run off and then ordering it. The second case that I will highlight is image-based procurement. Sorry, <laughs> procurement. That's a hard one. Um, AI and image recognition technologies, as I had just mentioned earlier, um, can ease the pr procurement process and reduce the time it takes to send an order. So an example of this would be if an employee can take a photo of an item to activate an automated database search for the exact item or an, or an equivalent product. The third case that I would like to highlight is personalized customer service. So this is a really big one, and I kind of touched on this earlier, but um, as I said, consumers want a more and more personalized experience as they shop, and using chat boxes or voice assistant powered by natural language processing and machine learning, companies can tap consumer shopping data and history to provide a hyper-personalized and automated customer service experience. And hyper-personalized is kind of a keyword that we've heard a lot thrown around lately. And we think it's important to highlight just because as a consumer, you do wanna feel like it's a personalized experience for you. And with a lot of these big data and data analyzing tools and predictive analysis, you're able to personalize an experience for a consumer very, very vividly. And the last case that I'm gonna highlight is heightened consumer engagement. So not just personalizing ex an experience, but also engaging that customer throughout the buying process. Consumer packaged goods players can use AI to maintain strong empathy with their audience. And they can do this by closely monitoring conversations on social media. Companies can use AI to analyze consumer data and identify sentiments or behavior that are crucial not only in building positive experiences, but also in the development and design of new product lines. All right, so now we've talked about all the good about artificial intelligence within the food and beverage industry, but let's talk about some of the challenges of adopting these. Um, and there are, there are plenty out there, but there, <clears throat> while there are a lot of benefits, there do, there's just as many challenges out there. And two of them are whether to buy or build is another critical decision. In an ideal world, food and beverage brands would build tightly integrated in-house technology that would reflect the unique needs of their company. And as you know, each food and beverage distribution company is unique in its own way and how they operate. But in the real world, the battle of AI talent is so severe that leading technology companies spend over 650 million annually to woo desirable candidates. All right, so right now I'm just gonna quickly kind of highlight three of the challenges that we've seen and some of the 
bigger challenges um, when adopting these type of AI systems. The first one would be cost. Having a full plate of options may seem tantalizing, but potential adapters face numerous challenges and among them being the biggest is probably cost and getting buy-in for these type of systems. And with margins already thin, food and beverage companies, they just don't have that deep pocket of like Google or Amazon when it comes to investing in AI. But I think an important note to make here is showing the benefit of adopting these type of systems and then showing the ROI of it. So another very, very good sell on these is that you're able to monitor the data in a way that you can, per, you, you are able to prove the ROI on investing in such systems. The second one would be integration headaches. So integrating new technologies is never easy, but in our experience, we have found that having a plan and sticking to it and you know adapting to it as your business needs are, are brought up is huge in that. And even for food and beverage companies that have found the perfect vendors, integrating a new AI system into existing technology, technology stacks can be a headache, especially for large conglomerates with fragmented systems. All right, and the third one that I wanna to touch on is proprietary data. So with the right proprietary data, a food and beverage company may not be able to build machine learning models that can perform. And we've seen food and, beverages, food and beverage companies guard their secret recipes fiercely, but machine learning models should not be a mystery. This is the type of information that should be shared, but unfortunately, even with the right data, many AI solutions on the market work like black boxes. So without clarifying, without clarity and transparency into how algorithms are making decisions, food and beverage executives have a hard time determining whether a technology is truly adding value or how sustainable that value add is. All right, so in the consumer packaged goods space, pressure to seek out providers of automation and AI driven solution hinges on several factors. Right now, I'm just going to highlight five of those factors. The first one being, there are more marketing and distribution channels to engage. I just recently went to a conference and they talked a lot about the different marketing channels and distribution channels that you can seek out and use and they are getting more and more by the day. So having these type of systems that can kind of look into the different channels and give you data back is huge when looking to consider adopting AI. The second one is competition has gone from brisk to brutal. So as I mentioned earlier, the growth for the food and beverage industry has not been too great, but the competition is getting worse and worse. So being able to compete against competitors and having intelligent systems in place to use your data as a benefit is huge when looking to also consider. Unified synchronized data across all departments reduces errors, downtime, and costs. So implementing these systems will definitely unify a lot of these areas and definitely having integrated systems that talk to each other and work with each other is a huge factor. You don't want a bunch of disconnected systems that don't talk to each other that end up actually creating more manual work for you. The fourth one is Visibility across all stages of the business process serves as a key competitive advantage. So being able to look into your data at any moment and showing your data to um, distributors or your higher ups at that moment is very big for a, for a buy-in for these type of adoptions as well. And most of the systems that are out there now for food and beverage allow the visibility into any process or business stage that you are um, executing. And then the fifth time is real-time data on consumer behavior and market trends helps future-proof businesses. So as I talked about having access, visibility into those business processes, being able to see them in real time is also a huge sell and a huge factor to consider for adoption. You want to be able to see the data as it's happening and not have a lag. And then I'm also going to talk about a couple of solutions out there. So you have to ask yourself a few questions, though, and a couple of them are, can you compete? Um, the other one would be, do you have the right systems in place to drive cost out of your inventory, increase productivity, and generate revenue from new sources to position yourself for continued growth? 
there are many solutions out there and I'm just going to highlight a few of them, although these are not limited to just these few options. Um, just for time purposes, the two options that I'm going to go over are designed for a very large company with a lot of funding or um, a lot of expense that they can put into adopt, adopting an AI solution. That would be the first one. So companies with established data analytics and capabilities with a team of competent in-house developers can safely build their own AI platform. And I say safely because these type of companies probably do have a very in-depth in-house develop, development team. But if you don't, then I definitely don't suggest going down this road because a lot of homegrown systems tend to not stay up to date as much and you'll run into more problems down the road. But the other option is uh, for more probably mid-sized companies to larger enterprise companies are to um, seek out solutions that provide based on clearly defined needs, goals, and budgets. And that's up to the team that you work with too to define those. But working with an experienced team that can properly lay out an implementation plan is crucial when seeking out solutions. One of them that I'm just gonna quickly highlight is SAP. So SAP has a food and beverage solution that is built on SAP Business One. This solution delivers um, a lot of the things that I had talked about prior in the webinar, which was visibility, and they can also control where you need it, um, which would inevitably drive process, stock, compliance, and sales efficiency. Lori Michelle Keller is uh, their global general manager of consumer industries for SAP. She says that despite the wide range of applications, food and beverage companies tend to stick to specific use cases. And she actually went in to describe how, client, how her clients are using the capabilities of SAP's new Leonardo Machine Learning Foundation, which is their built-in AI process. But she described how, um, or she cited how key AI key artificial intelligence applications that positively impacted the front end and front and back end processes for their food and beverage companies. The second option that I highlighted was bundled solutions built for food and beverage distributors. So you'll also find a lot of bundled solutions that all integrate together. So instead of being just one simple solution as SAP's was, um, you can find bundled solutions. So you don't have to necessarily present the cost so much up front. You can slowly integrate these to create a, a bundle for yourself or for your company. And a good modern day business application suite should be designed to manage every aspect of your operation. It should include the core features every food and beverage distributor needs to manage their business more effectively, as well as offering some a la carte options tailored to your company's unique needs across industry segments. As I mentioned, there are many great products on the market today for food and beverage distributors, but there are few truly great companies that can actually implement these effectively and then integrate them with critical business applications or fully support them with a team of industry veterans that can understand and get to know and discover the nuances of your specific business. So there are a lot of you know, important things to consider. And I already said, you know, you want to make sure you have a plan, a budget, an implementation plan. And also you have certain goals laid out, um, as well as in your research for finding solutions out there. You should, you should note for partners that you want to work with, if you would, they should have a, their own support team so that you can have full access if something were to happen to your systems. And then an implementation team is also crucial and an experienced one at that. So in closing, I just want to say, I don't, you know, don't wait. Um, artificial intelligence is growing at a rapid pace, and we've seen more and more that companies, growing companies, are investing in these type of, type of solutions. And the food and beverage industry should act now. This is a foolproof chance for this industry to secure their operational assets. As I mentioned earlier, predictive quality analytics is a cutting edge technology that resolves several critical problems for this industry. They further combine combining other aspects of AI with predictive quality analytics opens new doors to develop a lot of future ready products. And as I mentioned, I just wanna caution again that this industry needs to adhere to choosing the right partner. 
food and beverage brands should choose their technology partners that sync with an enterprise expectation. But I just wanted to thank everybody for their time and for joining this webinar. Um, we are E2B Technologies and we've been working within this industry for over 20 years with a team of distribution executives as well as a consulting and support team. And as it says here, this is our mission statement. So feel free to reach out with any questions at all or if you have any questions right now, you may also um, submit them in the chat box.